irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to Female Filmmakers Fuse with Alexa Polar only on LA Talk Radio. Thank you for joining us today. This is Female Filmmakers Fuse. I'm your host, Alexa Polar, here today with my co-host, Robin Pabello. Happy Sunday. I would like to start with a disclaimer first. This is Female Filmmakers Fuse podcast. A podcast is like an audio blog, if you will. We are not news. Female Filmmakers Fuse formed two years ago within the name itself, Female Filmmakers Fuse, the word fuse meaning to form a single entity. It was established to join, unite female filmmakers in a platform that's of a positive environment. We have an annual film festival held each year in October. The podcast started this year, and its intentions are to promote, empower, and provide a place for female filmmakers to utilize their voice, share their stories, their experience, and what they have gained, and can teach others based on their journey. With that being said, let's welcome today's guests. Allison Volk. Did I say that correctly? Yeah, you did. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Alongside with her co-star, Wendy Wilkins. Yeah, hi, everyone. <laughs> did I say that correctly? You did. Okay, perfect. <laughs> now, um, you guys have a film coming out. It's going to be premiering next Saturday, uh, the 16th, correct? Yeah, that's right. It's at 2.45 p.m. 2.45 p.m. And where is this going to be? It's at the TCL Chinese Theaters as part of the Dances with Films Festival and we're so excited. Oh, okay. congrats. Right next door to where the Oscars are, so that's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's very <laughs> exciting, yeah. Congratulations on that. We'll get to that. Let's get to know a little bit about you, Allison, okay? okay. You're um, an award-winning writer. Mm -hmm. You're a film producer, and you're an actress. Which came first out of the three? Uh, I would, I mean... I, I would say probably the writing came first, but when I moved to Los Angeles in my early 20s, I came here to be an actress, and uh, I just wasn't getting the opportunities to go out for the types of roles that I felt fulfilled by as an artist. Mm -hmm. So then I kind of was like, oh, I can actually write my own stuff. And from there, I was like, well, now I need to get it made, so I guess I'll become a producer. <laughs> so <laughs> That's, you know, that's it, kind of funny, because that's pretty much where most of us start off in one way or another. We end up producing our own things mm -hmm. when we feel we're not getting the types of projects that we feel compelled to do or feel more fitting to do, if that makes sense. Totally. Yeah, that's that describes exactly my experience. Yeah. Um, real quick, if anyone would like to call in if you're listening live, the number here is 818-602-4929. Again, that's 818-602-4929. So you, you were originally a writer from their acting, from their producing. What was the first project that you did? Uh, I... I wrote, produced, and acted in a short film called Last Ditch Therapy. It was about a couple, uh, like, making their last effort to save their marriage. They totally were on different planets, and they ended up at this very weird house run by a magician slash, <laughs> oh. slash doctor, therapist, and they go through a series of, like, very odd uh, encounters with other characters that eventually brings them back together. Oh, that's very cool. That's very uh, original. I like it. Oh. Where, where can we find that? Uh, it's on YouTube, actually, if you just search Last Ditch Therapy. Mm -hmm. And uh, our our character who played Dr. Hillier is actually a magician at the Magic Castle. His name is Rob Zabrecki. Oh, and amazing. He's, he's super awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool. And um, so what when after that now well, okay before that do you act in all the things that you write and produce yeah usually that happens <laughs> okay no, that's <laughs> once you write <laughs> yeah well it's i mean to be honest it's so much work producing something mm -hmm. it takes so much sweat and blood and to me that getting to act in a project that i wrote is like kind of the icing on top so um so yeah i, I usually make sure that i have at least a cameo in mm -hmm. the projects i'm working on no that's good though because that's how you want to keep your that's part of the reason why you started doing it yeah. so I completely understand um and the reason why I ask that is is because like you said it it is a lot of work 
Um, there's times where if I do something independently, and usually I do it with with Robin, okay. uh, projects we've done together. And when, when we do it independently, we notice like it's so chaotic with all the work in the producing um, side of it yeah. that it sometimes takes a lot from well, us, correct? I mean, I wouldn't... Okay, too far away from the mic. We're, okay, so I guess I wouldn't call it chaotic. I would say that, you know, there's obvious reasons why each role has a specific position and you, you're trying to find those counterparts to, like, really find that balance. So, you know, yes, when we were starting in, like, Okay, how do we do it? If you hear heavy breathing, I apologize. My puppy Samba is here, so <laughs> I'm not, not heavy breathing. Yes, <laughs> none of us, but it's my puppy Samba, so I, I'm hearing it, so I'm just... She is says she a hi. puppy? Is she a puppy still? She's a forever puppy. She's uh. 10. <laughs> She's little Jack Russell. She can find her on my Instagram. Um, anyways, uh, but yeah, I would say that, you know, when you're first starting out, yeah, it's absolutely difficult, and, you know, separating the two, like, I... I'm very good at organization and I'm very anal about that. So like color coding and having all that. But you know, when I want to just DP, then I just take that hat off and I'm like, here, someone else gets to finish and follow this through because it does get overwhelming, overwhelming. not mm-hmm. hectic per se. Uh, I, I would say, you know, that's one of the things where if you want and truly want that passion, like what you're talking about, how you, you, were, you came in as an actor and then you just said, you know, I'm not finding what I want as a role. Here, I'm going to write some content. And, you know, I'm sure you had collaborators along the way, which is fantastic. But definitely, like, once you get into that and you start to build your network and you find other people, whether it's like low budget, no budget, it's kind of like, okay, you believe in this content as well. So it's like, all right, mm-hmm. here. I'm going to, like, let's say there's, you know, there's four females in this room right now. Hey, you know, you would like to star in it. You would like to co-star in it. You want to direct it, but you wrote it. And, hey, I happen to be a DP. Let me (laughs) DP that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of like the nice collaboration that you have to start with because then it's kind of like, oh, I wrote it, I have to direct it, and I have to produce it. It yeah. absolutely becomes overwhelming at that point. And that's, you're right. That's the word I meant to say is overwhelming instead of chaotic. And, and it's very true. She, Robin is very, um, you know, she's good with the details, the to-do list, like all that. I'm the very opposite. I'm not as organized. I'm, I'm, that's where the word chaotic comes in. That's, <laughs> that's chaos. Yeah. Yes, okay. I, I am all chaos. And, and <laughs> I think that's just part of how I work. And, and it's weird because like sometimes like driving up here, we're talking about another project when we're going to be working together on. And she's asking me all these questions. And in my mind, I already know what I want, mm. but I can't express it out exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm just like, ah. And that's the reason why, because I know as an actor, you know, it's very different than a producer. So you have different hats that you're mm-hmm. wearing. Yeah. Are are you organized and then you go to the actor mode? Is your actor mode organized as well? How does that work? Uh, I would say generally across the board in my life, I'm probably overly organized. <laughs> okay. But there's definitely there's definitely like a fluid flexibility that has to happen once you're on set. Like mm-hmm. if I when I show up on set that morning, I'm like thinking, okay, do we have food? Do we have the person who's mm-hmm. going to go get the food? And then I get on set and I'm like, okay, now I can set that to the side. Mm-hmm. But you never know if someone's going to be like, where's my paperwork? Then you kind of have to jump back in. Right. And you also never know when the director is going to be like, hey, I have a, cre- a question about the script. Let's talk about it. I mean, it like requires me to be very fluid and flexible mm-hmm. in my roles within the film, which it, it it's challenging at times, but I also feel like I just really love being the space, like the container to hold this project. Mm-hmm. So I, I also find it very fulfilling. And maybe that's because I like to control things. But, <laughs> <laughs> but who knows? Right. Yeah. Now, it's interesting because um, you, you mentioned that uh, I, I wanted to know how it how you differentiate yourself from one to the other. Like, when do you step aside? When do you say, OK, now? it's time for me to get into I, I gotta think in the zone as an actor I gotta get into my character and, you know and when do you allow yourself to go back to producer mode if you're producing the project as well especially if someone's gonna come up to you and ask you questions while you're in character yeah. you know how does that work how do you control that uh, well it defi- that's definitely one of the challenges like, mm-hmm. especially when we're getting ready to start shooting like you know the days before like I need to be in my actor persona, like mm-hmm. preparing to be on set. 
And sometimes that's really challenging because I'm thinking, oh, shoot, there's like a last minute issue with the location mm -hmm. that I ha I'm the only person who can deal with it. Um, so so that I don't have like an easy solution to that. It's, it's more like, oh, yeah, this is one of my challenges that I'm like constantly working on. But I have found that when there's somebody on set who's like, knows that they're in charge of producing mm -hmm. they're like the onset producer it makes everything much easier right and that's definitely a mistake that i have made several times <laughs> not but, having that person right and that's how we learn too because right. sometimes yeah. it, doing doing things independently it's not as easy mm -hmm. it, to get the certain people or certain positions that you need especially if there's zero budget involved or very right. little budget involved and that's something I know a lot of people have an issue with and it's one of those things like where I try not to um, look down upon because I know a lot of people were trying to start up something we're trying to make our way into this industry that's very difficult and so when I see things like especially online and people are posting like, hey, I'm doing this project. And they're very real for the most part. I mean, as long as it's something that's not continuous. And they're saying like, um, I don't have a budget. Does anyone want to collaborate? As long as they're not saying like, you get IMDb credits and then this is a great opportunity for you. <laughs> like, use, don't use those words. Like, I'm sure you'll get IMDb credit. Like, that's fine. But you can't pay your rent with that. So right. I think being honest and saying like... I, I want to do this because whatever the reasons are and if anyone anyone else has the time like let's work within our schedules I can be compassionate and understanding towards that mm -hmm. but I notice that sometimes it it doesn't it's not equal with other people on social media where people are like nope this is illegal you have to pay you know and is that something you've ever come across and oh yeah definitely in fact I, I have experienced that with several projects before and this project I knew I just knew it was gonna be very low budget mm -hmm. we didn't have really any money so when I approached my actor friends to be part of the project I was very clear look this is a passion project we have these resources we're making this project because we want to and I'm looking for a collaborative team that's like cool with that mm -hmm. um, and and interestingly I mean the people that we brought on were, were very collaborative and very understanding of the situation but I found that you just have to be totally upfront because mm -hmm. We want to work with like great people who mm -hmm. are like passionate and skilled and talented, and they just they do deserve to be paid. So, right. so you know, it's it's and, a catch twenty two. Yeah, yeah it, and, and it I is. I see people online being like, oh well, they don't value you enough to pay you, but it's not that. It's just that we want to make a project and we don't have any money. Do you want to just do this fun thing with us? But I think also when you uh, start working in this industry and you keep growing and you work with the same people, mm -hmm. then you can build that as well. You build the trust. And then I think you can start paying a little bit as things start to build. And that's the co whole collaborative process. Right. And I, I've come across that where, um, like what you're saying, getting to know more people and this is also how you can weed out certain people yes because you yeah. you start to do favors for others and mm -hmm. you're saying like okay i made a note i made a favor for that person i i did their project for free so i know i can contact them in the near future if i ever need to call in a, a favor and so when you do that you get to that point in time and you're like okay i'm ready to call that favorite if that person for the most part they're pretty understanding they're like yeah i remember i did a favor for you um you're calling it in i'm right there for the most part you know, and then if there's there's some people that are just like, no, I, I'm already past that mm. favor part. Uh, it's time yeah. for you to pay. And it's kind of like, hey, I just literally did one last week for you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what, what do you have to say? Because I know, Robin, you, you, you deal with that more. Uh, I'm, I'm saying like you've seen it more than I have because I'm, I'm more writer director and you're more like deep. You also do AC. Well, and I'm a union AC, so I'm very proud of that because I'm, you know, a second AC in the union. And then I also non-union um, have been camera operating for other DPs, which is quite nice. Um, and then I DP as much as I possibly can because that's the end goal. That's my MO. So um, with that being said, it's quite it's 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 quite normal don't freak out. Don't freak out. Samba. Sorry, there's a, a, a bird at, at the window. I thought All you right. were telling me not to freak out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so um, basically, uh, I just heard from a lot of other colleagues um, and professionals that have been in the business for umpteen years, and they were like, yeah, I still work for free on some of these passion projects with friends or, you know, students because 
you got to start somewhere, you know. I mean, it's amazing the contacts you can make because you never know who's going to be your next boss. You never know who that person is. That's why they always say, you know, the industry is a small is a small world, which it is. And, you know, definitely you can weed out the people you want to work with and the people you don't. You know, I'm fortunate enough that I've been able to, like, pretty much get along with a um, m- majority of all my colleagues, you know, for whether it's long hours, no pay, um, great pay. Thank you, Samba. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Getting and, a kiss from the dog here. <laughs> yes. And, you know. Paid by dog kisses, okay. Yes, always. <laughs> hugs, hugs all around. Um, but, you know, that that's one thing that I, I am very grateful for is just having that opportunity. Um, but, again, hearing these professionals that have been in the business for over 20 years telling me, hey, yeah, I still shoot stuff for free or, oh, I'll just, you know, I'll pull focus for this project, you know. You know, you have to start somewhere. And, like, obviously when they started out, they had to call in favors as well. So it's really just staying grounded and finding the right people to work with because some of these people are, you know, major hitters in the business. And they still work for free because they like the content, you know. You may not have the resources at the moment, but, you know, you never know where they're going to be in five years, ten years down the line. And it's kind of like, oh, cool. I worked on that when they were started, you know, like they saw something in that person. So for me, I, I, it is something that's accomplishable. And I apologize for those people that are trolling or, you know, kind of correcting you like, no, you need to pay them. Absolutely, you need to be paid for your time and your talent. But everyone starts somewhere. That's one of my fears, too. If I post anything, I'm always afraid to. And that's why partially I don't post anything. Mm. It's because I'm afraid to get that whole um, backlash, you know. Yeah, I understand. And I, I personally would rather work on projects that I can pay my talent and crew in. And if I'm, if I ever come across something I can't, then I always work some sort of deal where it's a deferred payment. If I know for sure that there's going to be money coming involved, you know, there's going to be money somehow in the near future, then I say, hey. I know there's going to be money for sure, and I would like to pay you as soon as that money comes in. Like, you guys will be the first to get paid. Yeah, I think as long as, you know, we're all working hard. You know, we're Mm -hmm. all working, and it's all a collaborative process. But there's only so many hours in a day, and, you know, LA is expensive too. Mm -hmm. So I I think when you work in a collaborative uh, process, as long as you're respected Mm -hmm. as an artist and and you're having a win-win situation, you're on a... You can see that everyone's working together... I think for me, I've made a short film too before mm-hmm. as a producer and writer, and I paid a small stipend to everybody because I just felt it, it's even if it's ten dollars, it just gives this <laughs> feeling that you're that you're valued. You know, this is true. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. I think that that it comes a long way. You know, um, you know whether it's low budget or to scale, you you're still giving that respect to your 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 colleagues you know whether they're coming on as a PA or it could be you know the director you know either way like across the board as long as that respect is there it's kind of like yeah okay I'll work you know I'll work for free for you because I really believe in it and I want to support you as my friend and vice versa one that comes one that comes along Mm -hmm. yeah well I think that's it's actually not working for free it's a barter system you know yeah because you're doing something for for that person and they're going to do something back for you but by the way Alison served great food on her set <laughs> that's <laughs> important well that the food is important yeah. I should say my uh, my producing partner is Mikhail Kreutzwickler who also directed the film and, and he said we have to have good food and so I was like okay got it yeah. I mean and that is important people will leave if you don't, if you don't oh, yeah. serve and the reason behind food. it too is because you're working 10 hour days right sometimes 12 hopefully no more than that um but you know you're working that you need something to sustain you like if if you're not being paid or you're on a low budget scale then yeah absolutely that will kind of like up the ante it's kind of like okay great i might samba uh, never work with dogs or children <laughs> good advice um, so you know i mean that's definitely that's something that comes to mind as well because like you know you just need to sustain the body you need to make sure like people have their coffee or their tea to like just keep them going yeah i agree and crafty is always important <laughs> um, i worked on a st- i worked on a student film when i when i first moved out here and they served us peanut butter and fluff sandwiches for lunch. <laughs> 
Wow. Fluff is like a marshmallow. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've, wow. Sugar. It was awful. Interesting. Wow. Uh, I, I've been to a set once where it was macaroni and hot dogs. Wow. Like cut up. Yeah. No, like oh. every time, every day. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, and I was just like, wait, why? <laughs> That's well, well that's, you probably didn't work with them again, right? <laughs> well, I mean, it was a student project, so it's a little bit different. And I think yeah. as their parents, it's just like it's whatever's left in the fridge and the Actually, you know, pantry. <laughs> yeah, you remind me, I've worked on a few student project projects, and it's often the mom and dad are making the, the, the food, food, which is great. That's Aww. really nice, you know. <laughs> Support, <laughs> you know, yeah. and that's what it is. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, I mean, I... I I haven't been on a set like that in a, quite a while, but like I'm definitely always humbled by that because then you're just like, look where I am. I am lucky enough right. to be here doing something that I didn't know was available to me. Something that I didn't think like, oh, you know, like usually it's like nurse, doctor, lawyer. Like there's never like, oh, yeah, you can be totally. a cinematographer, you can be a director, you can be a writer, you can be an actor. That was never presented as like, this is, these are some of the opportunities that you can have as a career. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're on those tough jobs, it's kind of like, I'm so lucky to be doing something I like or love really. And then with working with people that I like mm -hmm. and watching them do whatever it is that they specialize in. So, I mean, that's the way I look at it. Maybe it's two rose colored glasses, but I mean, there's no other like way that. to look at it. Yeah, there's no other yeah. way to look at it. Cause if you're upset, then don't say yes to the job. Well, yeah, well, that's, that, well, that's the thing. If you're happy on set that it, it, everyone works together and it's a really joyful, it was on, on Deanie Bean is dead. That was a real fun, fun set. Oh, I'm so glad you feel that way. Yeah. <laughs> that's good though. Yeah. Uh, um, Robin, you, you reminded me of something. I, I saw it once on a subway uh, in New York, and it said um, it had a list of many not so great things, and one of them was filmmaker. And then it, the, underneath that is like time to get a new career or time to think of a real career. And it's interesting because only if you're in this industry do you understand like everything that it takes yeah. to be in this industry. Right. And it's a journey. It, it it really is a journey. It's and it's a struggle mm. for the most part. And then one one of those things like you don't want to give up because you want to say it was all for something, you know, mm. like everything. It had to be for something. Yeah. And so when I saw that, I'll never forget that. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> like it was like the bottom too. Like wow. it, there's other things that you know I, I don't remember the other things because that one really stuck out to me. But it was just like filmmaker, and then like really get a real career. And I was like. Wow. wow. Ooh, that's so, interesting. I wonder who posted that. Mm -hmm. I think it was a bank. <laughs> I think it was a bank. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a bank. Oh, my goodness. Don't of get course. me started. My short film was called Big Bully Bank. But, <laughs> oh, man. Based on a true story. <laughs> yes, trying to close my bank account to disastrous results. Though it was cathartic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it's interesting that, um, you know, talking about working for no money, is that this industry is really fueled by passionate people who mm -hmm. have something that they want to share in the world. And when we don't feel like we're sharing that thing, we start to feel unfulfilled. We start to feel, you know, like, why am I doing this? Filmmaker is the bottom of the list. Mm -hmm. But when you are expressing the thing that is in your heart that needs to come out, I mean, I could work for free day in and day out, and I did <laughs> on that project. But and because um, it, it, it's a different type of currency, it's a different type yeah. of payment. I Absolutely, guess. well, it's it's um, self fulfilling. But by the same mm -hmm. token, that's why I think it's a kind of apprenticeship when you're going going up, mm -hmm. um, and you know, you would work for free, but also you know you should be paid too you know right. it's like because i think that that's the the problem with the 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 scales of how some people are paid you know it right. should be and that's in every career you know yeah you see, the scales yeah are just so unbalanced well you know? and i think that's exactly the key right there is balance yeah. and and if you do something you know that you're doing for free as a favor mm -hmm. like the project that i'm going to be um doing next uh I don't have a budget at the moment, so I want to see how I'm going to try to fix, you know, I'm trying to still figure things out. So with that being said, I'm not going to do it consecutively. I have to be mindful of people's schedules and times, right. including my own. I'm not going to say, hey, this will literally take 10 days to shoot. We'll be done. I'm not going to say, let's 
do the full 10 days because then I'm taking work away from people hmm. when yeah. they could be making money in, you know, seven out of those 10 days. So I'd rather just pick and choose which days on the calendar will work for everyone that they're they're able to get away for that day for free or whatever. And I mean, it's not really for free for free, but you know what I mean? And so it's, yeah. that's where we need to find balance. And I think that's what works out for everyone. So as long as it's not consecutive, like, <laughs> hey, you're going to be working for free for a month. I hope you don't mind. I'm like, no, <laughs> I think everyone yeah. will mind. But I think like that balance will help out tremendously as well. What do you say, Robin? Uh, that's producer. <laughs> I, no comment. I, don't, I do not want to be in producer mode. <laughs> That, no, no. That, as a DP, though, if if you're going to be hired and you're going to do it as a favor, if I'm a, if I'm going to reach out to you, and so say, so here's the thing. I have done that. I've camera operated for other DPs for free on some of their on some of their shorts because I I enjoy the content and I enjoy the people. Um, you know, if I'm free, they also know that I'm upfront. I'm very honest, and I just say, hey, yeah, I'd love to do this, but if something comes up and I can't turn it away because mm-hmm. I do need to pay my bills, then they're understanding. Because you can't at that point get upset. Because I, I've, I've done the same where when I was beginning, and I was like, hey, if you have a job that comes up, let me know. I'll replace you, or can you replace yourself with someone you trust that's going to be good? Because that's that's where it becomes like you know there's the standard of everyone saying it's either good fast or cheap mm-hmm. and you can't have all three <laughs> right. you know that's where you that's where the barter comes in like do you want it to be fast do you want it to be cheap or do you want it to be good mm-hmm. obviously right <laughs> you know it, it comes down to the people you're working with and the resources you have but i was i've been lucky enough where i started where I had to work with no money, very limited resources, but I wanted it to always be good and I always wanted it to be fun, you know, and there are moments it, where you have to pick, you know, two out of the three to make it work. And I feel like if you are limited, it forces the creativity. I was about to say that, but um, the interesting thing as an actress, I've worked on big budget films and, yes. and TV series and no budget and small budget. And um, the exciting thing when it's a collaborative project that you've kind of agreed to, or actually I was cast in this, thank you, <laughs> um, which was, you know, and it's been a wonderful experience and knowing that it was a very low budget film uh, mm-hmm. that everybody was working together, um, then, you know, and you're passionate about it, it, it all comes together yeah so and sometimes on a bigger budget one I sit around watching and that's why I actually got into producing and writing sometimes you look and see and you think god I could have got this done quicker uh, with less money and you know some more passion involved right Mm -hmm. that's a good point yeah because in all honesty when when you're when you're forced into the creative you never know what's going to come from it Uh, Alexa and I the first thing I think we ever shot that was big. We had 35 cast and crew, and it was a 1920s musical. Everyone thought we were nuts. Oh, wow. Ooh, that sounds fun. <laughs> yes. Still think um, we're nuts. <laughs> that's okay. I mean, that's what passion is, right? It's something that you find that you love, and you and you make it come to fruition. Mm-hmm. So what was nice is I think I had, like, two baby 2Ks, three 650s, and, and like, bounce boards. That's what we shot that entire <laughs> film on. Wow. Yeah. And how can we see that? Oh, uh, uh, that <laughs> one. She can tell you. I'm terrible at that <laughs> okay. stuff. It's on my reel. But, I mean, that's something that I really enjoyed. It was, I mean, I love period pieces. Like, if I could have had, like, all the toys in the world, that would have been fantastic. But we didn't. So we just utilized what we had. And it turned out not so bad. So, I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm happy with it. Mm-hmm. Now, from that to why we're here. Okay. I need to ask because this the title alone is interesting. Beanie Bean is dead. Is that yeah? Okay. <laughs> so where did what came first, the title or the concept? Or because sometimes as a writer myself, sometimes the title comes first. And what does your title mean? What is this project about? <laughs> <laughs> this uh, the idea came first. Okay. Uh, Mikael and I had been shooting a series of short films, unrelated to each other, just kind of shooting stuff. Mm. And um, after one day of shooting, he we sat down and we were having wine and his girlfriend was there and she was, she said, you guys need to make a feature. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went home and I kind of like molded over and um, <laughs> it's easier to, for me to write when I have like some parameters. And mm-hmm. in this case, the parameters were the locations. Um, 
and I had just gone through a really difficult period of time uh, where I experienced a lot of overwhelming jealousy and insecurity. Okay. And I think uh, <laughs> that those emotions kind of got funneled into this really cool feature film project that pretty much takes place at Mikhail's house okay. <laughs> for 60% of the movie. Okay. And the, the film was originally called Crazy Deanie and the Day She Strangled Her Boss. And That's me. <laughs> he is the boss. All right. Um, I, uh, gosh, I was listening to um, the Indie Film Hustle podcast, and he was talking about films with long titles. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I want to have a long title for my film. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, eventually we realized that Deanie's not crazy. She's just very emotional, <laughs> which is not the same as being crazy. As right. We women have been dealing with that right. uh, for years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just because we have a strong emotion does not mean that we're, we're crazy. crazy. Exactly. And we don't like being called crazy. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> thinking about it. My, my fists, we go, <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. <laughs> so, uh, so Deanie Bean is dead. Is um, is the title that we landed on? It's a kind of a key moment in the film where Deanie like frees herself from this past obsession that she had, um, and that's where the title came from. Nice. That was a long answer. <laughs> no, 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 that's a good answer. And Deanie Bean is dead. Yeah. No, no, no. no. She, uh, obviously, I mean, is that your character? No, I'm I'm Maxine. I okay. play uh, the casting uh, breakdown was. Uh, the Devil Wears Prada Boss Meets Goldie Horn in Overboard. So oh. I love those two films. Okay. Me that's too. Good, and in my language. <laughs> and that's actually now my branding. I love it. Someone came up with it, you know, that I was cast in because, uh, and it was such a fun arc in the film to play because mm -hmm. I'm, I play a, you know, top CEO or a Goldie Horn in Overboard type. So okay. it was so much fun to play. Sounds like fun. But I was cast as this horrible boss. But I'm not horrible. I'm justified. <laughs> <laughs> I think her character is speaking out to us. Yes. <laughs> not Wendy. <laughs> yeah. That's Maxine speaking out. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> how, how did you do with the casting? How did you meet Wendy? Was this prior well, to? I, can, or? I, I was I was cast as the normal process, you know. Okay. Um, uh, I think I might have self-submitted or my agent, I'm not sure. But funnily enough, I'd met Alison before at Women in Film. Oh, okay. nice. And, you know, and that goes to what you said before, you know, you never know, you know, what's going to happen in the future. Right. And, you know, we met each other and, <clears throat> excuse me, and we had a, you know, great brief meeting and respected each other's, you know, process mm -hmm. and I think I don't know if you remember you remembered that when my, oh, it yeah. came in yeah and uh, yeah. and also I worked with a lady a director called Kat Shea who's now directing the Warner Brothers movie um, the Nancy, Nancy Drew, Drew one oh yeah. nice yeah and Alison had happened to work with her before as well and I think Kat recommended me to you as well so it's kind of a whole you yeah, <laughs> uh, Wendy was one of the few people that I didn't know before we shot the film. Okay. Most of the roles went out as offers to people who I know, who I've worked with. Um, since I'm an actor as well, I'm, I kind of uh, run in circles where with people who are working on television mm -hmm. and doing really exciting things. And um, Wendy and another, another actor in the film, Paul Teague, uh, mm -hmm. who just was in 20th Century Women. Okay. Uh, the, you guys were the only two who I didn't know beforehand, but Wendy came recommend... Like, Wendy and I crossed paths, like, four times yeah. before I actually cast her, and she submit Like, she submitted, and then her agent submitted. Okay. And then uh, we met at Women in Film, and then Kat referred her to me. Wow. And I so I was like, okay, ah. like, All I have signs to use point. Her, okay? like, so, this woman obviously needs to be in my life. So. <laughs> <laughs> All signs are pointing to that, yeah. And, yeah. and also, I did hear that uh, apparently a few uh, star names submitted, so I'm so proud oh. that I got, you know, got... <laughs> So, yeah, I, so I, f when I was when I sent out the breakdown, I thought I just want to see who submits. Like I know this is a low budget project, but mm -hmm. let's just put it on the breakdowns and see. And we did get a few, a few star names. You know, uh, people who were on sitcoms in the '60s and okay. '70s, like 
who are still pretty big names, actually submitted to the project. Wow. And uh, Wendy beat them all out. Woohoo! Oh. Congratulations, yeah. Wendy. She Thank did you. give a great audition, I'll say. And sure, she uh, she hasn't seen the film yet, so she doesn't know this, but um, her performance is just spot on. Oh, oh. She oh. Really, thank you. She really <laughs> nails the um, the arc of the nasty boss turning into a total, like... <laughs> person who doesn't know who they are <laughs> yeah i get hit on the head or something like that you have to watch the movie <laughs> and, and, and i will nice. i'm gonna be there oh, next great. week saturday yeah, i'm gonna go watch so it i can't wait coming. yeah um <laughs> so that's how you guys met you know i want to know what how many days was it that you guys shot this uh, like because it's a feature yeah it, it's a feature film so okay. uh it was kind of like speaking to your you can have it uh, fast, cheap, or good. Uh-huh. <laughs> we went the cheap and good route. Okay. Uh, we shot a week over Christmas break in January of 2017, and mm-hmm. went, that was a week that Wendy was on. And then we had to do a couple weekends in January as well. Mm-hmm. Then we did another full week in March with uh, a different... Oh, no, you were there too, Wendy, yeah, and that was the office. Yeah, and it was an yeah. interesting continuity because... <laughs> I went to Australia in between. That's right. Oh. And it was summer there, so I had to wear a hat uh, and everything, okay. so I couldn't get a suntan. <laughs> oh. Yeah, <laughs> hair was an issue on this film, I have to oh. say. Like, I, I, like, just, I cut my hair for the film. It was shorter. Mm-hmm. And um, and then it kind of grew, and then I was like, I changed hairstylists, and I was like, oh, shoot, like, how do I <laughs> tell her to do the same thing? And she couldn't quite do it, and... So it was it was an issue for all of us, but hopefully it's not that noticeable. <laughs> that's, that happened. Spoiler to us. alert! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, that, I think that's a that's a that's, that's a thing that happens, especially when you have pickup days. It's funny. Mm-hmm. It happened to us. We did a, a a project together, and it involved kids. In a, what was it like a junior high, a I, middle school? I don't I know. I think it was middle school. Middle school, and so we filmed during the summer, right? And so. We didn't know all the kids involved. Well, all but two were going to private Catholic schools. So they were just, we're on summer vacation week and do our hair crazy. And so oh, they yeah. grew their hairs oh, out and no. they looked really adorable for the project. It was perfect. And then we had a, um, the director came back. He's like, hey, we need one reshoot. Like, we really got to do this. We got to reshoot it. We found a better location. And could we get everyone involved to be there? And so I contacted the parents, and I was like, yeah, we'll, we'll be there. The kids are looking forward to it. Yeah. They show up, all haircut, looking prim and proper, oh because they had gosh. they started Catholic school. And I was like, what <laughs> is this? I went to Catholic school. I knew it. <laughs> you know the rules, right? Goes. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was like, what yeah. is this? Actually, I just remember Kat Shea told me, because she did, wrote and directed uh, Drew Barrymore in, was her first film, Poison Ivy? Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, you know her. No, yes, I remember that film. She wrote, Kat wrote and directed that. Mm-hmm. And Amazing. The pickup shots for that, um, she came, had had to come back and apparently Drew would cut her hair short. Or, yeah, or, it was a know, pixie oh, cut she had yeah, done, so but her hair was long in the big, like in the actual film. Yeah, so they had to... Wow, I'm oh, dating gosh, myself. You know, <laughs> oh, yeah, so I am a Drew Barrymore show. fan, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, it wasn't her first film, of course, it was E.T., yes. right? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. I was going to say, like, wait a minute. <laughs> but the one that Kat wrote and directed, yeah, so she was telling me she had the same, she had to yeah. do that, yeah. Which makes sense. I mean, pick up, I mean, in, in reality, we all know this as filmmakers that, you know, you d- don't don't necessarily shoot in sequence right. nor do you shoot you know all the way through so right and then sometimes it, it things happens. happens where you have to go back and do reshoots and stuff like yeah. that yeah so yeah those kids were all wearing hats <laughs> oh, <laughs> just like every single of them one of them had a hat on and it was just like what else can we do it happens <laughs> yeah. it happens you know those are just you know that's the the, the beauty of m- movie making yeah. yeah you just have it to make really it is ma- it really is a type of magic when it happens yeah. but i think our i think our last shoot date was sometime in july last year so okay we like end of july so we spent and a very long period of time, but we did it. How yeah. long has it been, uh, the film been in post? How long did that uh, take, the process? It took a while. It took, yeah. it took from the end of July. In, in fact, we just we were still doing some ADR last week. Oh, okay. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that you happens. know, when you have your picture lock and then you have to do your color grade, the music score, and then you go in and you're like, oh, okay, maybe we can fix this or that. I mean, right. people, I don't think, because, like, that's definitely not my world, but um, post-house people 
kudos hats off to all those folks that work in that area you know i mean just the time and the energy and just the focus it takes so much focus yes absolutely the minute detail yeah it's i mean frame by frame you know what i mean like so it's it's very important every single person's job is just amazingly to the detail and but yeah i mean the post-production i want to say takes what isn't it like the ratio is like three to one yeah, I'm, not, like I'm not yeah. surprised yeah. yeah i think so yeah it's, it takes good. a lot of work and the thing that the thing that um i think is super challenging is when you're when you've been working on it for so long and you've been staring at it for so long mm-hmm. and you're like oh i love this character at like not realizing that um there like some things might be missing or might be a little off to somebody who's watching it for the first time so right so there, that's another uh you know challenging aspect of post-production oh yeah, yeah. that's why your scripty for continuity is so so key yeah love them scripties so okay. this this coming saturday the 16th it's premiering yes okay we'll premiere and then what are your plans after that more festivals or do you yeah have an well idea? we're waiting to hear back from some other festivals i would love it if we got into you know some more california festivals because it's easier for us to go obviously right. and it's really fun um <laughs> but we have a few you know we haven't we haven't secured our distribution at this point, but mm-hmm. we have a few options that we're looking at, and I think Mikhail and I are just kind of like, okay, let's uh, let's just get through a Saturday. Yeah. yeah, it's been very hectic, but once we get through Saturday, then you know it will be time to sort of pick up the next step. And mm-hmm. one thing I did learn on this project was that um, next time I want to have distribution like clear and know what I'm doing mm-hmm. in terms of distribution before I even start shooting the project. Um, so I think that will kind of, you know, just be helpful in terms of choosing a clear path. And it didn't happen this time because I think we were, Mikhail and I were both like, oh, we're making a feature. Oh my God, what are we doing? <laughs> you know, it, and it wasn't his first feature and it wasn't my first feature, but it was our first feature together. Mm-hmm. So um, next time I just would like, you know, talk about organization. I'd like to have my plan all mapped out beforehand. Yeah, which I think is fantastic because, you know, I think, I think the success of, any project is the amount of pre-pro you do. Mm. Um, the more pre-pro you can get, I feel like the more everybody's on board on the same page, the yeah. synergy on set then becomes like, oh, here's a little speed bump. Oh, whoops. But we're still on the same page. Yes, and knowing why and what it is exactly, mm-hmm. I think is so important too. Like it's very different being on a huge, like a big budget thing. Like, mm-hmm. oh, this is a big budget thing. We're all gonna make money. We don't really care if it's good. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's not the mentality, but. Well, it seems like with some. I, I'm talking from an actor's perspective. Okay, you know, yes, like yes. If you get cast in something huge, then you're kind of like, oh, this is awesome. Show up and do your job and yeah, then that's it. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Yeah, so that's the actor coming out. Uh, but then on a smaller thing it's a little more actually smaller projects I think are a little more actor friendly because you usually they're more character driven so mm-hmm. you get to play a little bit more true but, yeah that is true yeah I mean currently I'm working as a second on a feature and the rapport between the director and the DP is amazing I mean mm-hmm. just oh, watching great. that mm-hmm. I mean I I had thought they had worked together like a couple years this is their first time working together Ooh. and the shorthand is phenomenal i mean the communication the knowing what they want without even like really having to like do that is a true testament to that pre-pro i mean they spent oh, yeah. you know like mm-hmm. i was just like wow how many how many features have you guys done oh this is our first one i was like <laughs> what i was like that's amazing okay so then i just kind of like prodded just a little bit because you know out of curiosity like how did you find this rapport i mean they're both fantastic men that are very very talented so i was just like oh okay great and it came to be that they had spent five days a week you know a whole month prior and they knew the ins and outs of each other wow. so well that the they knew the personalities and everything yeah yeah just the the just amazing it was just like like a glove and it's true that sometimes you meet somebody and you really just click with them and mm-hmm. it just works mm-hmm. i mean not that the ooh. Ooh. oh what <laughs> and sometimes it doesn't work like time's up oh, oh. now um there was obviously a, uh it seems like there was a lot of synergy a lot of good rapport going on with the cast and crew for this project. Yeah, I'd definitely say so. And I can see it, like, you two ladies, like, 
this is yeah, the first time you guys are working now. together yeah. and I wouldn't get that this is the first time you guys work together uh, just meeting you uh, you know so that's amazing mm-hmm. that you have you know developed that rapport was it equal it, you feel like it was the same on board across the board like cast and crew of, of this project or uh yeah actually I would I I would say we we got a great well we got a great cast we definitely got a great cast some of the crew members i didn't get to know as well so mm-hmm. i'm not sure but yeah. but when we were on set it definitely felt very fluid to me yeah and that's important yeah mm-hmm. it was, as i said it was fun i even got to do some of my own stunts oh. <laughs> she did all of her own stuff oh did you <laughs> yeah. and i was talking to the director mikhail about that at the opening night of the film festival and i said yeah i did my own stunts and he goes that's because you were good at them and <laughs> yeah, <maybe. laughs> Nothing too dangerous, I hope. Uh, well, no, no, no. Fun, I, fun stuff. If I recall, you were falling onto mattresses. Okay, yes. okay. Being, yes, the, yes. That's we, good. we really put Wendy through the ringer. I have to say, she got stuffed in a trunk. And she, I forgot about that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they forgot about you. Did they walk away and uh, like, no, wait, the talent no, is in the trunk? No, they were never. very, very good. Wendy <laughs> would not let us forget about her. Yeah. <laughs> and neither would we forget about her. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so great. I'm really looking forward to seeing this. How, if you had, why don't you tell us what the log line is? Great, yeah. And then also, because I know that's a big thing, especially with the writing, how'd you come up with the log line? Oh, I'll tell you the log line first, and then I'll answer the question. Okay. So, Dini Bean is Dead is a dark comedy with romance. It's about a woman who tries to win back her ex-boyfriend at his engagement party without revealing that her boss's dead body is in the trunk oh. outside. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so, that's the log line, and uh, I... I came up with that log line after sort of like studying it because they say it is it is harder to write a log line than mm-hmm. a synopsis because it's so short mm-hmm. and you have to be able to say it quickly mm-hmm. and many times <laughs> and many times many times and uh, I read uh, a couple years ago I, I read Sid Field's book mm-hmm. um, Save the Cat Save the Cat mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. no Save the Cat was the other one wasn't it ah. Sid Field is the other one isn't it. I know that Save the Cat because I'm, I'm I've yeah, read it. Read, it's about one, though. it's about the logline. I mean, they yeah. mentioned the logline and the importance of it as well. It's like the second chapters. Yes. No, the first or second chapter is all about the logline. Yeah, it's like right, okay. So whether or not it's Save Field, we'll have to check. Yeah. Um, the book <laughs> is called check. Save the Cat, <laughs> and uh, and they do have a section about loglines and mm-hmm. and then you know you kind of read different loglines and and also it comes from trial and error from telling people the logline and if they go. Ooh, mm-hmm. then you know you got something and if they're like oh that sounds good then you know that you need to work on it a little bit more <laughs> which I think was one of the suggestions I think right in, in it's save the cat that's like definitely because yeah. pitch, pitch it pitch it around to strangers because they'll give you your their true answer if it's a friend yeah. it's kind of like hmm yeah, that's great. <laughs> well, I think it. I think it also helps if you say it in person because if I was like, it's about a girl who tries to win back her ex boyfriend. Like, it's, it's like, <laughs> yeah, you gotta be excited. Yeah, about you, you, it. it's something about the feeling behind it, yeah. also. Yeah. yeah, delivery, definitely. Yes, that's if, the word. Because yeah. it seems like you're you're going. I mean, you're doing very well in your career. And it seems oh, like it, it's going in the right direction. So congratulations oh, on that. You. And I, I look forward to seeing where it leads to. If someone were to come up to you, whether it was a, a, a woman or, you know, saying like, or a girl saying, I would like to be a writer someday or an actress or do what exactly what you're doing all three. What suggestions would you give, give someone that's just starting out? I think the most important thing is to just start. Mm. And I, I, we hear this a lot, but it's really true. I mean, Start writing scripts, start writing stories, start picking up a camera and playing around with it and seeing what you can do. Start reading about the industry and checking out what a film festival is and how it works. Mm -hmm. Start finding people who also do what you want to do. It's, I I have been amazed since I moved here how much um, power and control I have over my own career. And it's like, nobody's going to ever give you permission, ever. That mm-hmm. just doesn't happen. Right. I mean, maybe in rare cases it happens. But the green light isn't coming. You have right. to give yourself the green light. Exactly. That's how you get projects done. Well, okay, so let me backtrack. So w- did we hear how you actually fell into the industry? I don't think okay, so. Okay, I'd love to hear that from both of you, just because that's that's my 
one thing that I like to ask people when I'm working with them or just meeting them is just like, how how did you fall into this business? That's a good question. I I came up after call. Okay, let me take a breath. Um, <laughs> I went to college on the East Coast, and I was studying music. I was I thought I was going to be an opera singer. Mm. She's a great singer too. <laughs> Ooh, there we go. Many and, talents. Uh, it it didn't it wasn't quite jiving. So I did a semester at the O'Neill Theater Center in Connecticut. With a, with a focus on acting, but we also did a week of playwriting, and my play was selected to be produced. And uh, that was when I was like, oh, I can write it. Yeah, that's <laughs> cool. Um, but I knew that I didn't want to go to New York because it's too cold and it's too far from my family in Colorado, so I moved to L.A., mm -hmm. which totally, I think, threw my parents for a huge <laughs> loop. And um, I started trying to audition, and and then I, I told you already, I, I just... Wasn't, wasn't I wasn't getting the things I wanted. And right. th the truth is that even today when I look at my friends who are working on television, I'll see them like get really excited about a co-star and then you'll watch the show and it's like, can I take your order, sir? And, and it's just like, <laughs> I am not doing that. I'm just not going to do that. That's not why I moved here. Right. Yeah. I'm willing to have a second job or a third job or sometimes even a fourth job mm -hmm. for as long as it takes until I can do the things that I want to do and like actually make an impact in the world. That's wonderful. That's powerful. That is. That really is. Well, I think that the definition of success I just worked out is waking up every morning doing what you choose to do pretty much and mm -hmm. I think you do that already Alison because you were just saying then you know you're not waiting but you're already doing it mm -hmm. you're already making great films and you're writing and you're you know she's very prolific so that's yeah. amazing that's, that's, it, it, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying like that's what's great about it, is like that's what I see in the future and I want to know and I, now I can brag like yeah she was on my show <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and it's, you know and it's about enjoying the journey like what you say yeah. that there's a there's a you know a few actors out there that have in inverted commas made it they're not happy yeah you know this is true um, because this is they, very true because maybe they've done these co-stars and things like that or doing shows that they're supposedly getting this success but mm -hmm. it's not it's, it's not, not feeding the their soul mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. yeah it's very true yeah. how did how did you fall into it oh have you, you got a few hours but <laughs> 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 no i started acting quite late um mm -hmm. because i with the, with what Alison said, I really didn't feel like I had permission to to be an actress. I was brought up that mm. that's not a job, you know, mm -hmm. right? So, like the billboard, yeah. Mm. yeah. So I had quite a kind of long journey. I I was a cop, and then I was a, a realtor, and I still do that, which I enjoy, uh, on the side mainly for uh, people in the entertainment industry. Um, and but, she's great at it. Wonderful. Thank you. And, you know, I was very successful at that in Australia, and then. I moved to London first, then here, and just, you know, working on the craft. And I wrote a little film uh, because, again, I wasn't getting, getting uh, you know, out there. And I wrote and co-produced and with a director just really to show our work. And then that won some awards. And I was, like Alison said, oh, I can write too. So I'm <laughs> working on that as well. That's fantastic. Yeah. And, um, and I've got a little memoir coming out soon called... Mm. Uh, based on my five years as a cop called Sex, Love and Cops, which... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That says it all. Which I'm hoping that that will add to the real estate of, of um, creating a series, you know, so okay. and things like that. So, yeah. That's nice. Really, that's very good. Mm -hmm. See, really you cool. summed that in a nice little log line. Yeah. <laughs> there you, go. you really did. Nice <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we'll have her here next week when she's done with her projects. <laughs> 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 um, I, I do have to mention real quick... Um, there was another uh, filmmaker, female filmmaker, that she was trying to get on the show. Uh, her project's also part of the, what is it, the Dances with Films yeah. Festival. Fantastic. Um, we couldn't get her on due to our, it's just, since we started, it's been amazing. I think we're booked till... December, she said. Yeah, we're booked till oh. December. Yeah, which is amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, yes. thank you. Um, Red, and I I apologize if I say your name wrong. Radhika Red, Womack. Her film, In This Gray Place, will be premiering June 17th, which is Sunday. I unfortunately cannot go to that because it's at 1230. I'll be here. Mm -hmm. But anyone, I suggest, just like the day before, do it a whole weekend thing. Watch both films. Dini Bean is Dead is Saturday, June 16th. And then In This Gray Place is Sunday, June 17th. So make it a weekend. 
you yeah. know, watch these wonderful yeah. films by these wonderful filmmakers, uh, female filmmakers. Not that that makes a difference, but it's just great to know that we're out there um, and we exist. Now, um, your project starts at it premieres at two forty five. Yeah, that's right. Two forty five. That's and awesome. There will be a red or a green carpet for thirty <laughs> minutes before. That's great. So if you want to walk with us, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Take pictures as well. Yeah. Two forty five on Sunday. Saturday. 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 Saturday the sixteenth. Cool. That might be rough for me. I'm working Fridays, but I, if I can, I will definitely. Fridays. Fridays. <sighs> What's that? A fra- oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Fridays. Fridays is when you are kind of working from from Friday to Saturday early morning. Oh, oh. so you might not be awake. I will. Probably. If she's awake, she'll be a zombie. Is what she's saying. <laughs> no, but I would like to come out and support. So. Oh, well, hope to yes, see you. I'm yeah. hoping. I'm hoping that I can be alive yeah. at 2:45. <laughs> I'll be I there. Hope you can be alive too. I'll be there. If anything, maybe I'll drive her. That way, she can nap on the way there. We'll see yeah. what we can work That's out. Very sweet of you. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I w- for sure want to watch this. I'm, I, I do apologize. I do look at the clock because we are limited here. Um, Aww. <laughs> I know. Can we talk for some more I know, time? Right? It's been so much fun. <laughs> um, but I think it's great. I, I look forward to this project. I look forward to seeing where it goes. Um, I know it real quick for any filmmakers out there, especially if they're starting out, the film festivals, really important. Like if you get your project in the festival, go to every event, especially since you get a badge to attend. Oh, yeah. That's the best way to network and meet people and expand, you know. Mm-hmm. The fe- film festivals are huge. And then there's people watching it. You might get a distribution deal there as well. That happens a lot. I hear about it all the time. And all, and, and this is a big film festival. Dances with Films is huge. And so you never know who's going to be there. So congratulations on having your project there and having it premiere there on top of that. That's amazing. We're so excited. I'm excited for for you mm-hmm. um <laughs> where can people find you allison uh social media website list it all whatever yeah. you want okay so just not the social okay <laughs> not the social not the social security number just oh, <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> not the social media oh okay so uh you can find me online at allisonvolk.com that's a-L-L-I-S-O-N-V as in Victor O-L-K. My Facebook page is Actress Allison Volk. And my Twitter handle and my Instagram are just Allison Volk. And then you can find the film at DeanyBeanIsDead.com. And that's D-E-A-N-Y B-E-A-N is dead.com. And we also have a Facebook page. If you want to get tickets for Saturday, it's um, at DeanyBeanIsDead.com. <sighs> DeanieBeanIsDead.com. I need to learn how to say my own <laughs> film's title. <laughs> yeah. Tongue twister. It's, it's okay. okay. So female filmmakers fuse as a tongue twister as well. Yeah, yeah. it is. <laughs> it really is. I still can't say it. <laughs> oh, and you can find me at uh, WendyWilkins.com. That's Wendy, W-E-N-D, Y W I L K I N S and Wendy Wilkins Oz. It's at Wendy Wilkins Oz. That's O Z is my Instagram. At Wendy Wilkins Oz O Z is uh, my Twitter. And you can Google me. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to Google you. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to be there as well, obviously, for the premiere, because yes. you want to watch it. Yes, and, and anyone that comes, please come up and say hello. And, you know, we love uh, any questions about, you know, the film or acting or, you know, anything within reason. I think, <laughs> I think there's actually a and a after the screening as oh, well. Okay. Oh, the cool. theater is really big. I saw it on Thursday. Oh, oh nice. Mm. I'm excited. Nice, nice, nice. And you're going to be there. Um, is everyone, do you think everyone's going to be from cast and crew? Because I know sometimes logistically that might be an issue. Do you know the majority of your cast at least will be there? Yeah. I th- I'm Director as well, too. Oh, the director? will be there yeah uh definitely and um i th- i think like 90 percent of our cast and crew are going to be there i know of one actor who played a small role Bodhi newcomb who is going to cabo no. <laughs> instead <laughs> of hanging out with us which i can't really i mean cabo's pretty tempting so yeah. um, <laughs> so I, I know he's not coming but i think most of our cast will be there and what how and who was your dp uh, Mikhail shot it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. so he was director and yeah, director, DP. Yeah, cinematographer. Yeah. And amazing. producing, too, co-producing. And he was a producer. Yeah. All right. A film yeah. with many hats. That was amazing. Yes. So okay. thank you both for being here, Allison thank you. and Wendy. Thanks thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. No, it was lovely meeting you. I look forward to it. All right. You guys have a nice weekend, nice Sunday. It's beautiful out. And don't forget, next weekend, make it a thing. Go Saturday. Watch it. 
Sunday. Watch the other ones. I highly recommend it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're listening to Female Filmmakers Fuse with Alexa Polar only on LA Talk Radio.